The people who once traveled to this place knew of many things. Of hills that rang with great battles until peace was made so all could hunt the bison. Of a lake whose waters would never rest, the never-ending murmurs from deep underground were the songs of the bison fighting among themselves, striving to get out onto the prairies. For centuries before the arrival of European explorers, thousands of bison roamed the prairies in search of water and fresh pastures. In late fall and winter, bison herds would move to the parklands. Many came to the area known as Bodo, a large, shallow valley edged with trees. Bodo offered abundant water holes grasses for foraging, and high sand dunes for protection against the elements. Where the bison wandered, the people of the plains would follow. The people trekked to the Boro area on foot. The essentials of nomadic life contained in bundles carried on their backs or dragged along on travois. The people of the plains were hunter-gatherers. It is likely that animals such as elk, deer, coyote, or birds were used as additional sources of food, clothing, or decoration. Nothing, however, could replace the importance of the bison hunt to the people's survival. Although they were considered prey, bison were revered by the people as creatures of great spiritual and physical strength. Tree hunt rituals may have varied from band to band, but all of the plains people held ceremonies to charm the great bison into coming close to camp or entering a trap to be more easily overtaken by hunters. These ceremonies were rooted in the awareness that the success of the hunt was ultimately controlled by the will of the Creator. Bodo is not yet ready to give up all its secrets about how the communal hunts were carried out, but clues from the past have been left. Small black shirt pebbles are lying everywhere. The shirt could be split apart with anvils and hammers made of stone to be fashioned into darts, arrow points, and scraping tools. The people may have constructed buffalo pounds or corrals of wood and brush or laid skins over the brush to divert the bison. 
the area's natural basin would also have been used as a bison's gathering area. The people of the plains were resourceful hunters. A communal hunt in the Bodo area could have involved hunters masquerading as predatory animals. Starting brush fires or creating waterhole lures by punching through clay to bring up the pools below. How the people conducted their hunts may not be known, but there is no doubt stalking bison on foot, armed only with bows and arrows, was a dangerous, heart-pounding experience. No hunter could be sure that he would survive the frantic onslaught of hoofs and horns. were found in a carcass may have taken the choice pieces before sharing the bounty, but in the end, all families would benefit from a successful bison hunt. The slain animals had to be quickly skinned and butchered. It is known that several parts of the bison were enjoyed raw by the plains people and were often consumed during the process of butchering. Most of the bison was used. Hides would be tanned, and bones would be processed for the production of grease. The binding ingredient added to the pounded meat and berries to create pemmican. The women would prepare some of the meat for immediate use, but most was cut in strips for drying and preservation. The archaeological evidence suggests that the camps at Bodo were located near kill sites. This proximity meant that almost nothing of the animal would be left behind. All that is left to tell us of these people are fragments of their lives, tools, weapons, and pottery shards. Only the bison knew when it was time to move back out onto the plains. As quickly as they came to this place, they were gone. And as it had been for centuries, the people would vanish like spirits from the landscape, waiting for another season when the bison would lure them back to the Bodo Sands. <laughs> 